this video, we're going to get our tile map set up where we'll be able to walk in front of our layers or behind them or collide with them and also add decor. <laughs> we'll go through the plan. Getting your tile map layers down correctly at the beginning is important for your game. Otherwise, it can quickly become a mess. So first, let's plan out our layers that we actually want. So we're going to have to start thinking a little bit three dimensional and think about things layering on top of each other. So of course, our very bottom layer, something we're going to want to walk on top of and everything else should be above will be our ground. Next, it's going to be something we want to be on top of the ground, but we'll always be able to walk in front of. So I'm just going to call this one walk in front. But these will be things like our staircase or maybe some plants on the floor. Next, we're going to need a specific layer for things that we collide with. This could be the base of a tree, a big rock, the base of our pillars. And why I say the base of the tree and the base of the pillars is because of our next layer, which will be walk behind. This will be where our player can walk behind them, like the top of our pillar here. Our player would disappear when walking behind it, or be able to walk behind the back of this building. The bottom half of the building will be collidable, and the top half will be on our walk behind layer. And then finally, just another extra one. Handy for sprites you want to add on top of things like vines or plants growing or signs in front of houses. I just call this the decor layer. Now within all this, of course, we need our player to be on a sorting layer as well. So he actually falls between collision and walk behind. So we want to be in front of things that we collide with, but behind things we obviously want to walk behind. So cool. Hopefully that makes sense and going into this will be a much simpler process. All right, let's get into it. So in Unity, first of all, I'm going to want to grab the tile sets that we're going to be using. For this series, I'm using the Ninja Adventure Asset Pack. I'll link it below if you want to grab that. And in our asset pack, I'm going to go inside and this time go inside the folder called backgrounds, then inside tile sets. And in here, I'm going to want to grab tile set floor. Then I'm going to hold down control and grab tile set house. With both of these selected, I'm going to drag them into our assets, then go into Unity. And in our assets, what I'm going to do is right click and go create folder at the very top and call this tile sets. I'm going to grab both of these and drag them into our tile sets folder. You know what, while we're cleaning up, let's create a new folder again. I'm going to call this sprites, which is going to be for my player sprites or any other sprites we add in. So cool. I'm going to double click on our tile sets folder and we're going to want to set up both of these just like we did for our player. So I'm going to hold down control and select both of these, set sprite mode to be multiple, pixels per unit to be 16 or whatever your sprites are set to. These sprites are all 16 by 16, filter mode to be point no filter and compression to be none Then click apply. Then you have to do this individually of your sprites, but click on I'll go tile set floor first, click on sprite editor, then in the top there's a button that says slice. If you click on this, where you can click type and set that to be grid by cell size, pixel size, we want it to be 16 by 16, like we said, and then you can click the button down the bottom that says slice. Once that's all sliced up, you can click apply and then close this off. Let's do the same thing for tile set house. So sprite editor, slice. Grid by cell size 16 by 16, click slice, and click apply. Cool, now if you open up these, you can see all our individual tiles cut into little pieces. Close that back up. Now to be able to paint on our scene, what we're gonna want is a new window. So in Unity, go to the very top where it says window, go down to 2D, and select tile palette. This will bring you a little pop-up. You can click on the tab at the top and drag it next to your inspector. And now, like it currently says, we don't have any valid palettes or targets. So over in your hierarchy, if you right click and go 2D object, tile map, and then we'll go to rectangular since we're using square based tile maps. I'm going to click on our gizmos because that's turned off at the top. Now you can see automatically this has created us a grid, which would just hold our tile maps for us, and then a tile map, which our tile palette is automatically selected. We still have no valid palette, so if we click on this and then click create new palette, I'm going to name this ground, and then I'll click create. Inside this tile sets folder, I'm going to actually create a new folder to hold all our new palette information. So I'm going to call this ground palette. Double click on this, click select folder, and then what you can do is go into your assets, into your tile sets, where we've got tile set floor, click on the overarching main image, and drag this into your palette. When you let that go, it's going to pop up this window. I'm going to select our ground palette folder again, click select folder, and this will generate all our tiles for us. Now what this has done is created a palette for us, and like with any palette, like with anything like paint or whatever, where you select a color, you can click on one of these. So if I click on this green one down the bottom, you can now paint on your scene view. This doesn't work in your game view. It'll only work in the scene at the top. 
There's lots of different tools you can use at the top of your tile palette, like the eraser if you want to remove things, the fill bucket like you can find in anything else. So I can fill in the middle of that if I drew a little square. And yeah, basically anything that you need to be able to paint. So like we had in our little notepad, we wanted different layers to play with. We've got our palette now for ground. So now let's create our ground tile map. We can use this one that we've already created. So if I go back to the inspector on this tile map selected, I'm gonna rename it to be ground. And for our layers to work properly, down in the tile map renderer, in additional settings, you have a sorting layer. All of this will be set to default by default. <laughs> So let's click add a sorting layer. And while we're here, we can actually set up all our layers that we planned out. So we wanted ground. Next, walk in front. After that, we wanted collision. Then we said 3.5, which obviously isn't an option, will be our players layer. So we can actually add our player in here as well. Next will be walk behind and then decor. So let's add those quickly. Walk behind and then decor. Cool, so if we go back to our ground tile map and go to the sorting layer, and I'll select ground. If I go to the tile palette, I'll show you. Right now, our player is hidden behind our ground. We've added our player layer, but we haven't set our player to this in the inspector. So let's select our player and in Sprite Renderer, we've got our, the same sorting layer option. He's currently set to default. So let's set that to player. And there he is, pops up above. Just gonna draw us out a nice background. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> So this is all on our ground. Next, I'm gonna want something I can walk in front of, but we've already got our ground layer and all these tiles are a bit boring to use as examples. So let's click on ground in our tile palette and go create new palette. And I'll name this houses because that's what it was named in the tile set. Click create, go to tile sets. Now create a new folder called house palette Then select folder. And the same as before in our assets, I'm gonna drag in tile set houses make sure you're in the right palette folder so i want the house palette select folder and it will create our tiles for us cool so now we're going to want a new tile map to be able to draw onto so we can set this onto a different layer so on our grid in our hierarchy i'm going to right click and go 2d object tile map rectangular and i'll call this walk in front i'll go to the inspector and set our sorting layer to also be walk in front Back to our tile palette. At the very top where it says tile map, we've currently got ground selected. So instead I'm gonna set this to walk in front. So like I said in our example, staircases are pretty good. And something handy to note is you don't have to individually click and place each one of these tiles to place them on. Instead, what you can do is drag over all the sprites you want to select and then paint it onto your scene. So you can see I've got all these staircases selected in our tile palette, I can paint it on like this. So what I'm actually gonna do is grab the left side of the stairs, place it at the top, the right side, and then I'm gonna grab the middle and paint it on twice. So we've got a nice centered wide staircase. Very cool. Because this is on the layer walk in front, if I press play and test this out, our player can walk up and walk on top of the staircase. So he doesn't get hidden behind this either. Okay, very cool. Now, next in our list, let's get our player colliding with something in our layers. So again, on our grid, let's right click 2D object, tile map, rectangular. And I'll call this collision. In the inspector, I'm gonna select collision and set our sorting layer to be collision. Cool, now before we actually make this collidable, we'll draw on some things to collide with. And you know what, everything's beige, so let's change the grass color to green so we can actually see these better. Back to houses. So first, make sure you've got collision selected on the top. So let's select our pillar and stick it on our scene. Now, of course, right now, our player can just walk right over it because there is no collision set to this. So click on your collision tile map in the hierarchy, go to the inspector, and we're gonna add some components. If you click add component and search for tile map, we'll want to add the tile map collider 2D. For things to be collidable as well, they need rigid bodies. So let's add a rigid body 2D. And because this isn't gonna be moving anywhere, we can set this to static. Now we're not done yet because our player actually doesn't have any collision boxes on it. So let's go to our player and go add component and search for a box collider 2D, because he's a bit square. Cool, I'm gonna click edit collider and zoom in and drag this down so it hits just the top of its head. So he doesn't go bumping into things before he's actually touched them on our scene. Cool, so now when we press play, we walk into our pillar and we bump into it. I can't get through. Oh. And my guy's spinning. Okay, to, to stop your guy from spinning, back on our player. On our rigid body 2D, we wanna to go to constraints and freeze Z rotation. That way he doesn't spin, unless you want your player to spin around. It's up to you, no judgment. Okay, so cool, we've got him colliding now. Next, 
we want to do walk behind. So on our grid, right click, 2D object, tile map, rectangular, walk behind. And we don't need any collisions for this because we want to be able to pass right through. But we do want to set our sorting layer to be walk behind. Don't forget that step. So let's go to the tile palette, select our tile map in the top to be walk behind. And then I'm going to go in and grab the very top of our pillar and stick this on the walk behind. So he'll collide with the bottom, but he'll be able to walk behind the top of the pillar. So if I press play to test this out, I bump into the pillar at the bottom, but I can walk behind the top of the pillar. Very cool. This gives a lot more depth to your game. So it's a nice thing to implement and worth the effort to sort out your layers. Cool, now my final bonus layer is decor. Something I've found handy when making these top-down games. So let's go to our grid 2D object tile map rectangular, call this decor, to the inspector, our sorting layer to be decor, and back to the tile palette, let's zoom in and pick something. So as an example of this, you can see we've got like this barrel of, is it fish or is it weapons? <laughs> I'm gonna want the bottom half of this to be on our collision layer. So we can't walk through this. And the top half, you see how it's semi-transparent? I'll want this to go on top of our collision layer. Now you could say, or you can just put it in the walk behind layer. That's fine, that does work. But there may be something that you want on the walk behind layer to also have decor on it, say for some ivy growing up or something like that. Imagine this was taller. My example's not working <laughs> that great, but you get the idea. So we've got this decor layer, which goes above all that you can decorate things with. So over on this side, let's say, sure, you could use walk behind on the bottom instead of a decor layer. But yeah, I want this sign to be hanging at the top of the column, but it disappears and overrides it. That's why we have our decor layer. You can stick it on top and it doesn't make anything look weird. Or like a window for some reason is on the side of this pillar. <laughs> but cool, we've got all our layers set up. Like I said, this helps a lot when adding the feeling of depth to your game. The main thing to be sure of is you're switching between the layers at the correct times. And be sure to always test this out. Look, where's our player gone? I can't see him. Oh, he's behind the building. Well, it would be handy if the camera followed him a bit and actually tracked our player as we moved. Was that a good segue? In the next video, we're going to be adding some camera movement to our game so our player can never escape from us again. And in the future, if I've already done this, I'll link it below. But I am planning on doing a live stream where I create a rule tile for our tile map that's handy for alleviating doing what I'm doing right now, where you have to draw on every single tile yourself instead of it automatically filling in. Okay, spoiler alert. This is the rule tile I'll be making in the live stream. You see, as I draw on, it creates our map for us. So all the pathing is automatically done. So be sure to subscribe so you can see when that happens. And now I've made a mess on my scene, so let me undo that. <laughs> cool, this whole package is gonna be on my Patreon. So if you don't wanna set up these tile maps and layers, you can grab it yourself there. But if not, I'll see you in the next one, where like I said, we'll get our camera movement down. Bye.